Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna try and see if we can firmware update this uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise DL380 generation 9. Um, I was gonna say some good things about Hewlett Packard Enterprise like their SPP was now available but it's not. They have put it behind a paywall again. You need to have service to get it and it's um, yeah rather irritating that uh, if you have purchased this product and you have had it for the amount of time that it uh, was under warranty and then when it gets out of warranty they want you to pay service otherwise you don't get any service um, well you might be able to get some firmware for it but yeah it's like they're definitely not giving the same amount of uh, support for their product when it's outside of warranty and if you don't want to cough up the ridiculously high amount of money that they charge for their service uh, well you are better off with another brand but they just happen to have that SPP package available for a few months last year and I downloaded it so I have it here on a USB key that I have made with a Rufus um, put that on a USB key it's almost I think it was nine gigabytes of, a, of a update package and this update package was both for the generation 9 and for the generation 10 so uh, yeah, this goes very harshly in there the server is right now off and there is some network activity that's not really some network activity because um, I haven't connected it to the net so it's it's kind of green red orange blinking but let's turn on the server and we can we can see what this is so the server is on so let's switch to the screen and over here on the screen it's going through the initial testing of stuff so um, <coughs> 2015 is, uh, is where we're at seems like December 27 2015 is when this was updated last so oh, it's it's not unreasonable to uh, to update it Here we uh, get the CPUs and stuff. I need to press F11. F11. Come on. It's not happy about that. Did I plug? Oh, it, it did get it. Okay. Uh, but we can see that this is the generation 9. We can see the two CPUs, which is uh, four core CPUs, but they're very fast. A decent fast for this uh, server. For this CPU generation and it has 256 gigabytes of RAM the temperature in here is 15 degrees <laughs> yeah it's it's a bit cold so this is the get into the boot menu stuff I, I think this is a bit weird but I think we it might be different when we firmware update this uh, so um, to get in there we have to press enter legacy buyers on time boot min a oh, one time boot menu okay press enter again to get in there and then it uh, it goes out and it checks the the rate controller which uh, is the p440 ar and here we get all the boot here we get the boot options we have cd rom usb key hd network Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, intelligent provisioning, enter system, you okay. I guess it's gonna be number two. So number two it is. And it does do something. We get this nice menu where we can automatically firmware update or we can interactive firmware update. I think it's just a matter of how much we wanna do and if we don't want something. So we're gonna go with the automatic check and it loads a lot of linux stuff loading kernel and it didn't do exactly much that was weird <laughs> oh this is an awful experience it doesn't work 
Holy moly. What a piece of... <clears throat> okay, so I have connected the server to... Well, I've connected the IDO adapter to the, the switch and the laptop to the switch. So they are connected together. I have copied over the, um, the SPP, which it's a kind of a package with all the, the updates for this model of servers, all the generation nines, I guess is in there. So I copied that to the local hard drive on the, on the laptop here. And I have connected to the ILO adapter. Uh, we can get an overview here. It's, um, it's, it's bitching. The battery is not good in this server, so it's, it's, it's complaining about that. I click health status. It says here that uh, smart storage battery status is degraded. Yeah, they do a lot of failing those batteries. But the idea was to um, to use virtual media in here. The remote console. Remote console. Can we load our HDMI 5? We get that. So we get the screen of what it's showing over here. That is neat enough. So can we load our ISO file? Yeah, local ISO file. Come on. And that's in the temporary directory. And our ISO file is, is there. So open that. And it says down here that the media is mounted. Well, I'll remove the USB key, I guess. Ugh. There. And we should be able to boot the power. Uh, press and hold. That will be. We'll just do a reset. Are you sure? Yes, sir. So um, this screen over here went in black really fast. This one, it was so slightly slower. Does pop up with some text for us. Are we able to make this bigger? That would be neat. I do not do this often on HP machines, admittedly. So let's see, we should be able to press F11. I'm just gonna do it on the keyboard over here. We got that. And then we should be able to boot from, from the virtual media. Okay, so now we'll try and press the buttons over here. Enter again, we should get our boot options. Yeah, okay, first it will uh, load the RAID controller. And uh, we do have one logical drive, which we're gonna delete. And uh, then we need to check. I think we loaded a virtual CD-ROM drive, so let's try number one here. And attempting to boot from CD, yes. Okay, we're gonna try again. It had uh, unloaded the CD-ROM drive. Uh, so let's try one for CD-ROM. And attempting to boot from CD-ROM. And it dismounted it that wasn't too smart not very bright of it hmm <sighs> okay it did actually do something which most definitely isn't very helpful but yeah eh. okay I can get it to boot from that uh, ISO file so I have well also the the bios files is kind of you can't download those unless you have a service agreement with uh, hpe uh, but they have an old one that you can get so instead of 2015 we can get up to 2019 so maybe that will do something good for us who knows so we're gonna try and see and i had to 
I, I downloaded that on a USB and I have copied it down to the to the laptop. And so let's go here and it has underneath administration it has a firmware tab over here and in there you can uh, upgrade the firmware. The ILO firmware is not that old, it's from February 11, 2020. It's only two years old, but the, let's just see the... There is the system ROM and that's from 2015, so yeah, that is old. Firmware, and we can choose a file down here, so let's see if it will, if it will approve that flash file. Open. Sign flash. It's. Uh, it seems okay. Upload. Let's see. Using the blah, blah blah blah. Telling us that doing this we will lose connection to it, and that is probably okay. So, uploading the firmware to the server, and it will probably check that. See if it likes it. Oh, it actually just firmware, flashing firmware image, please wait. That's actually okay. It would though have been cool if it had told me, I have this version, you have uploaded this version, the, the version that you have uploaded is okay. Do you want to upgrade? That would have been nice. Okay, did it complete? Seems so. Mm, 2015, 2015. Nothing has happened yet. So we should probably try and mm, power off the server and power it back on. And I will also try and disconnect power and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, I've had power off and I went to the bathroom. Uh, so let's try and power this on again. Blinkity blinkity. It does have a nice light show. No, no. It's a better disco. And we did get something out of it. Look at that. It does say in 2019 now. So that is an improvement. And also in here we are at 2019 now. The backup ROM is still pretty old, so that's the original thinky, I guess. But yeah, we got a we got four years. Over here, I'm gonna see if I can if I have more luck with booting from the uh, from the USB stick now. I put the USB stick back in, so get as far as before let's see if we let it automatically try and do something let's see if uh, mm, mm, yeah. seems to still be not working it says here that the boot mode is legacy bias it uh, might be that we have to change that to UEFI for this to work it's actually able to boot from the from the ISO file on the on the system here is probably gonna make the same mistake or is it loading kernel? Is it actually working now? It's definitely thinking about it longer. Okay, yeah, this actually looks promising. Ah, focus, focus, there we are. Loading RAM drive or loading initialize RAM drive. Hmm, it's not in any hurry. Oh, it did something out of nowhere. That, that really must be a coffin, right? Okay, we ran into a bit of an issue. Uh, the laptop went into sleep mode and it removed the DVD drive from the media bay here. So I had to start over. And that was after waiting for it for a good 15 minutes, wondering what was going on. But now it actually came up with a progress bar and uh, that makes it so much easier to see that it's actually doing something. Oh, we can see it down here, it's at 11%. So that is very 
nice to have that progressing like that. So I connected power to the laptop. And once again, it's pitch black outside before I'm done filming. Okay, it reached 100%. Still wants me to wait. The laptop over here is nice. It has a little green thing that shows that it's doing something, communicating, so yeah. Oh, and as soon as I showed you that, it stopped. Yeah. Oh, and it started again. And it's doing something over here now. It went rather dark. And that's where I'm gonna end today's video. The screen went black. It went up to 100%. Screen went black. Nothing has happened since. That's a good 20 minutes ago. So, yeah. Who knows? Um, let me just admit. I'm not impressed. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.